Hey guys, welcome in that series of video about uh, Golem 7. Um, in this video, I will show a side-by-side -side comparison between Golem 6 and Golem 7 to help people who were using Golem before to make the transition between the way they were using the layout tools before and the way they're supposed to use the layout tools now. So I'm uh, running Golem 644 here. And I made a really simple scene of characters walking down uh, the valley here. And I opened that exact same scene with uh, Golem 7 and I want to apply some modification, some layout modification. And I will show you how I made it into Golem 6 and now how I can make this exactly the same way into Golem 7. Um, just before starting, side-by-side uh, -side comparison here. If we're just looking at the UI, you may you may not notice anything really different, uh, but actually there is. There's one chef icon here which disappeared, which was here before. It was called the Swiss knife. So if we're if we are using or looking into Golem 6, we can see that Swiss knife icon, and that Swiss knife tool helped doing some common operations like uh, deleting some unknown nodes or cleaning the scenes or uh, changing some attributes. So now that tool has been merged and doesn't exist anymore as a separate tool has been merged into the crowd manager. So if you go into the crowd manager, you got uh, a specific section which is called common tools and you can find the most common um, uh, tools which were being used by customers into the, the Swiss knife. So a really quick way to see if you're running six or seven is to check if you have or not the Swiss knife. If you don't have it, it means that you're running Golem 7. So, okay, let's go back into Golem 6 and let's apply some modification onto those characters. Um, let's start by uh, selecting characters. So I'm gonna uh, go uh, F9, uh, which is component mode within Maya. And um, what I can do here is uh, press W to make a translation of my characters. And even if the terrain is different, when I translate my characters, I can see they are adapting and it creating at the same time a translate operator. So it's saying that 37 entities have been translated and that uh, translation is a value of 6.1. Um, I can take those uh, same bunch of characters here. I can press E, which is the rotate tool within Maya. I'll go selecting the rotate tool and uh, take the rotation tool and rotate those characters. It says now that uh, I've been adding a rotate tool on the same 37 entities with an angle of minus 40 degrees. Um, I can select uh, those bunch of guys, say, okay, I really don't want those guys here, so let's erase those guys. So that's the way I was um, using the layout tool in Golem, I would stack operation. Uh, one of the main uh, really well, problem or limitation people we're having with uh, the, the version six of that layout tool is that that selection here wasn't, couldn't really be incremented. Uh, I mean, if you want to add more characters or remove characters, that was pretty hard to do it. Or if you do a pretty hard combination of operation on a, on a set of characters and you want to apply more, or you want to apply it to some other characters, that was a pain. So we, we decided to change this. So let's jump into Golem 7 here. So that's, so that's going to be here and let's open the layout editor. So uh, if you haven't watched it yet, I'd recommend watching introduction to the layout tool uh, video, which shows uh, what's the principles between uh, this uh, new layout tool and how it works. But uh, that should cover anyway, this video should cover the basics. So what I would like to do is do exactly the same. So I would like to select um, a couple of characters. So the process is the same here. I'm gonna go F9 to uh, switch into component mode. I'm gonna select a bunch of character, press W to bring the translate gizmo, and I'm gonna move down my characters. And let's look at what's going on here. So what's going on is uh, it has created a node called selector and it has created another node called translate. When I press the selector node, I can see the IDs of all my entities who have been selected. And now when I select the translate, I can see what's the value of the translate. The same way than before, I can change that value here. I can uh, disable a node if I want to. Uh, within Golem 6, you could on any node disable them by uh, just checking that box here. 
Now you can do it by right clicking and say disable. Uh, so I've been applying a translate, so that's good. If I want to apply a rotate, now I can just jump into the rotate tool here and apply a rotation and it will create a rotation node next to it. Okay, so that's good. And I want to apply or erase, so I want to select those bunch of characters here and erase them. So what I'm going to do here is instead of just clicking on a button, I would like to say first my selection has changed. So I want to bring a new selector and I want to bring a kill node. So I'm connecting my selector to my kill node here. And if I want it to be applied, I'm going to connect this node here, which is the root node, which is the part of the node which gets evaluated. I'm going to connect it to the selector and say that that node here is going to be active. So I just pressed V or you can do right click set as root to say that this is now the node which gets evaluated. And now you can see that my characters are uh, being removed from the layer. So the really nice thing with uh, that new layout uh, system is that let's say I don't have that connection here. Uh, I can really check what's going on in which part of my layer. So right now I'm just evaluating, selecting those characters and killing them. So my translate and rotate is not applied anymore. Or I can say, okay, I want to uh, set this as root. So now I want to translate and rotate my character, but not kill the people in the, in the background. I can uh, make a flow and specify that I want first to select those guys, applying translation and rotation, then select those guys, apply a kill and I can add more operation on top, or I can make it in separate flows, like, okay, one flow to translate the characters, one flow to kill them, and merge the two flows into a merge node, and you get exactly the same result at the end. Um, so what's different? So, so far, I've been applying something quite similar here. Um, what's different is for now, but probably that will change uh, in uh, next release, uh, when you were selecting a bunch of characters here and uh, you had the uh, simulation cache layout um, in focus, when you press Ctrl D, aha, uh -huh. oh, wait a minute, when you press Ctrl D, that was um, creating a duplicate um, node. So for now, within uh, the new version of Golem 7, that's not something you can do. If you want to duplicate a bunch of characters, you first need to select them create a selector node, connect it to uh, your uh, flow, and add a duplicate layer and connect it to the flow. And uh, as soon as I connect it to a root node, you can see it's getting, uh, being, it's getting rooted uh, once again. And I can take that new selection of characters, press W if I want to into the viewport, and translate them, and now you get your um, translation being executed. Um, so I hope this makes sense so far. Uh, you probably will see that all the layers here, um, most of them are, have been re-implemented the same way. So you had the time offset and time warp. They do exist here as time offset and time warp here. We add uh, a set bone node before where you were able to select a character, press F10 and you were able to see uh, is skeleton and um, animate, reanimate some of the bones. So if you want to do to do this within Golem 7, you don't have to go within F10 anymore. So what you need to do is you select a, a character here. And let's zoom back onto that character. Um, you can create a selector node to say, I want to select that character here. And I want to, uh, to specify this as root. So I'm going to press V to select it as root and see where the character, okay. And if I want to apply a set bone node, I can bring that layer here, which is the posture layer. And I can right click and say, I want to create a posture node. And what it does is it creates a new node within your outliner. And within that new node, you got a, a complete Maya skeleton here with keyframes everywhere within your graph editor and those keyframe can be reanimated. So you can take any bone here. I need to go into component mode. Uh, you can grab any bone, reanimate everything. You can even uh, put keyframes with the new version of Golem and everything is gonna be stored as a new layer. So it's no more like um, 
uh, proxy bones, it's the actual bones. And if you go into, uh, you know, the window animation editor, the graph editor, you'll be able to see all your keyframes and reanimate them the, the way you'd like to. So you have a full control on this and put keyframes everywhere. So let's take a look at the other nodes. The snap to tool still exists. The kill and kill are still the same. The import and export parsers, as now you can bring full skeleton, those doesn't exist anymore. Before you also had the character palette. So the character palette was uh, allowing you to see the rendering type and change the rendering type if you wanted to. So I could switch to another rendering type like the flag rendering type or uh, just stay with the previous one. And that was just adding a new layer here. You were able to see the previous, uh, well, the, the current meshes of the character. You were able to remove some of them and add some of and add some of them. So uh, this has changed as well. So it was adding a set mesh asset layer with all the operation in it. If we jump into Golem 7 and want to do something similar, so um, let's bring another character, let's say that guy here, and I would like to change maybe either his type or either his outfit. So I'm gonna do go into F9, select that character. Here we go. Create a new selector node. Um, say it's gonna be the, that new selector node is gonna be the root. So it becomes active and evaluated. So there's no more palette here. There's no, there's now a, a layer called rendering type layer, set rendering type layer that I can, I can connect to my characters. And that set rendering type layer allows me to change uh, the rendering type. So I can say, oh, sorry, my selector is apparently empty. So let's bring back my selection again. Let's bring my selector. Okay, should work properly now. Okay, here we go. So now it's saying that my current rendering type is light, but I could say, okay, my rendering type is flag, and now I'm having my flag into my scene. And let's say I want to remove some of the assets. I can use that node here, which is add and remove mesh assets. And that one here allows to quickly remove some meshes and put some other meshes instead. So let's add some meshes here. Let's press plus. What I would like to add is a sweatshirt. And let's remove some of the meshes here. And what I would like to remove is a t-shirt. And it's pretty convenient because with that new layout approach, I could say, okay, that guy here, I really want like him to remove his t-shirt and have a sweatshirt and have a flag into his end. So let's bring that guy here and let's create a new selector and let's connect that selector to the same flow. And now my characters have a sweatshirt, they have a flag and they go through the same graph. Um, so I was referring earlier that uh, we had the hide and kill. So that's the that's the kill and the end kill node. That's the new layers to be able to change the rendering type, um, assign directly a mesh, add or remove a mesh, assign a shader or assign a shader attribute. We had the posture node to replace the set bone. Uh, that's, that guy here is a new node. Uh, it's going to be addressed into another video. The face two is a new node. The look at is a new node. Those are the translation nodes, such as the translate, rotate, the scale and the scale range and the scale expand are now different as well. So if we go back into Golem 6, uh, what you could do was you could select a bunch of characters in layout. You could use the scale tool. If your scale tool was set as an object, it was scaling the characters. If it, was if it was set into word, it was changing the offset between the characters. The scale object didn't have any mean and max value. The scale word didn't have any mean and max value. Um, within Golem 7, it's still the same, which means I can still go into uh, my uh, layers here. I can still take my scale tool and scale my characters. So if I scale them, it's gonna add a scale node which is that node here. If I'm changing my tool settings to word and I'm scaling my characters, what I'm having is a expand node, which is that node here. So instead of being all the same, it's just a scale node here. We separate it into three different nodes. And we also have like a scale mean and max value. So scale range into which you can just specify a mean and max value, apply that to some characters and you'll have a variation. So if we do that, we can say, okay, I want to scale my characters between 0 0.5 and uh, let's say two. And I would like to apply this on the group 
uh, I, I just selected here. So I can just change my flow direction here, say that that's gonna be evaluated. And now you can see I'm having, oh, there's a, just a quick, okay. Um, quick refresh bug here. Mm, here we go. Okay, well, that's supposed to work uh, anyway, but that gives you the idea. So we, you get the scale range node, uh, which just uh, is able to provide a mean and max value and you can get started with. So let me end this video with uh, a final word about what's going on for the trajectory nodes. So before we had a couple of trajectory nodes and we knew that they were not really, you know, easy to use and not really understandable. So we decided to um, revamp some of those. So the avoidance uh, trajectory uh, layer doesn't exist anymore. So we had to remove that one. Um, mostly because the way it was done before was not working and we want to take more time to address this and uh, make it proper. If you want to use the uh, trajectory smooth, uh, that one has disappeared as well. Uh, and if you want to use the curve edit and uh, the trajectory mode, you, what you need to do is actually, as we have, as I, I would just show you, uh, as we have now bones, and the full Maya in keyframes, uh, you can just display the motion trails for the root bone of the character and you can change the motion trail, reanimate to be able to animate the trajectory. Finally, one uh, really um, useful layer is the trajectory vector field. Be ensured that one still exists. So you have a, a trajectory vector field node which takes a vector field into entry. So you, you can still paint your vector field and apply that to your character and uh, you'll get your characters being adapted with that. Uh, I'll probably do another video to show how does that work, uh, but it's pretty similar um, to what you had before. So that's a side note here, but uh, we tried to reproduce exactly the same layers. We had to simplify some, we had to complexify some. Hopefully you'll like the new version. Um, as uh, it's already addressed into another video, when you're gonna make a, um, a scene with Golem 6, and uh, apply some layers in it. If you reopen that scene into Golem 7, you may have some difference because we re-implemented every node and sometimes the implementation we'd, we've been doing would be different. So you probably, you could have some uh, weird and uh, not weird, but some small changes between what you had before in Golem 6 and what you have now into Golem 7. Uh, but still, the way of working is still the same. You still select your characters in the viewport. You still apply some modification. It's just now you have to uh, break this into selectors in one direction and transformation into another direction and connect those and specify which part of the graph gets evaluated. So hopefully it makes sense uh, and it helps you making the transition from six to seven and feel free to uh, send us your feedback if you want to. Uh, and uh, see you into the next video.